My name is Yang, and this is my ship, the Manila Galleon. Let me tell you about the Manila Galleon since you're new here. Pirates dream of taking this ship every night until they die. She's the biggest, toughest, richest ship afloat. The Spanish had the galleon built. See, they went looking for China and found the Americas instead. They called the American natives Indians and enslaved them and stole their silver. Mountains of silver. Lucky for the Spanish, the Ming Chinese needed mountains of silver to back up their worthless paper currency. So, twice a year, the Spanish pack all the silver they can into one ship and send her from Acapulco, New Spain, across 15,000 miles of ocean to their colony, here in Manila. In 2017, I was talking to my friend, actor Jack Yang, about this thing from history called the Manila Galleon. Now, Jack hadn't heard about the Manila Galleon, but when I was telling him about this, he, he loved this notion that I had about writing a, a swashbuckling adventure taking place in the mid-17th century, starring a, a team of East Asian scalawags trying to steal this famous treasure ship. We wanted these characters to be very real, but also, too, that whole concept of Asian pirates who primarily, on their own, don't like each other at all. There have been some fun resurrections of the pirate adventure genre. Obviously, Pirates of the Caribbean, the Disney Three Musketeers, the Monkey Island computer games, even Cutthroat Island. They're all so much fun. The heroes are rascally, the villains enjoy being villainous. There's humor, unlikely romance, friendship, betrayals, escapes, miracles. I wanted to explore not just the pirate genre itself, but how it manifested throughout the whole years because a lot of, because a lot into, into the 1930s, uh, the 1930s and Holly old classic Hollywood film, they love, they eat up pirate films so much. We're, what we're focusing on, though, are historical Asian pirates. And that's something I don't believe I've really heard or seen before. And I'm really happy that I get to work on a project like this. It's like the Asian uh, Ocean's Eleven. On the surface, it looks like, you know, a swashbuckling period piece with Asians and all different types of cultures, which is fine. But I love the whole meat of the story, which happens to be different cultures are working together. It's um, different ideas are working together. And they're trying to go against, you know, a empire, you know, who always looks down on them, who always oppresses them as well, too. What I, what I really like about the story, like you said, Eugene, is um, it brings to light a lot of Asian cultures that most Asians and Westerners don't know much about the formation of or how it shifted or where we are now is because of things that happened a few hundred years ago. Manila is a comic story told in six issues and the script is already complete. We're raising money to draw and print issue one and give us a head start on drawing and printing issue two. By the time issue two is released, we'll have a production pipeline to our readers established and we plan to self-publish one issue per month until volume one is complete. Our master plan is to finish the story as a three-volume trilogy, then work with Jack Yang to get Manila made as a Hollywood movie. Thank you for your time for looking into my art and Paul's storytelling, uh, and thank you for reading Manila, and hope you're looking forward to issue two. Thank you all for joining our crew and going on this adventure with us. We've had such a great time creating this story, and we know you'll enjoy it too. Cheers, folks.